as we enter the month of January, we know that conference play in college basketball is in full swing. And a lot of teams are starting to get a little bit more focused now. They're starting to get a little bit in the focus a little bit more. You know, some things, you know, just haven't really gotten completely there yet. But everything else, you know, is getting, you know, it's, it's getting by out there. It's getting by. Um, of course, you know, COVID has put a damper on things. The Omicron variant or whatever they want to call it now. Uh, so, like, 50-plus teams were on pause. The games have been rescheduled, canceled, postponed. All sorts of different things, as we have learned. And uh, what we do know is that the NCAA is not going to try and, you know, change things up. They're going to try and do the tournament as scheduled. I'm not sure if replacement teams are going to be a factor or not. But we know, what we're, what we know right now is that the tournament must go on. March Madness must go on as scheduled. So, that that's what... The first thing is that we have to talk about here as we recap week eight real quick. Um, this is the gauntlet for LSU right now, and this was an LSU team that couldn't keep up with Auburn. They could not keep up at all. They have a busy week this week, LSU does. Uh, like, this is... Like, this, I mean, they were... They didn't have any points for the first ten minutes of this game against Auburn, if you watch that game. They did not have points for the first 10 minutes. Um, so, yeah, something, something's got to give there. Christian Oteen has been off as well. And, like, um, there's still about 33 seconds left as of this recording. Ohio State is still leading Nebraska by 8. I'm not watching this game because um, Nebraska is 6 and 7. And they're about to be 6 and 8. But definitely a scare there. And, again, you know, teams are coming off pause and whatnot. And things like that. So, I mean, it is what it is. You know, like, Ohio State hasn't played in quite some time, I don't think. I think it's been, like, a couple weeks since they played. You know, again, teams have been on pause everywhere. So, uh, yeah. Who does have the best resume, though? I think it's Providence. Providence <laughs> whipped the ball. Like, they were up 42-17 to at half. They beat Seton Hall in a tough game. Seton Hall also lost to Villanova. That was a little... That's kind of a rough week for poor Seton Hall. But, I mean, hey, still a damn good Seton Hall team. But really, Providence here having one of the best rest mates in my eyes right now. And they did what they needed to do this week. They did what they needed to do. Can they keep it up? You know, they have, again, they have some of the best wins in the country. You know, Tennessee, Texas Tech. I mean, Seton Hall now. You know, just, you know, this is a good Providence team. They a good, a real good Providence team, you know. Can they keep it up? We'll see. Um, for Alabama, you know, they had a difficult loss, you know, uh, what a week or two ago, and you know they 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 had Noah Gurley's school in Tennessee and scored what twenty out there. I mean, Tennessee has absolutely no offense to speak of. You know, nobody has really stepped up for Tennessee. And again, Tennessee doesn't have really much on there. I, I imagine they'll still be right uh, for things like that. But I, I don't know yet. You know, again, the polls don't come out till Monday. So, you know, they'll come out early Monday morning. So, uh, and if you do watch Baylor, I will stay on New Year's Day. If you watch Baylor, I will stay on New Year's Day. Boy, we got a treat. We got a treat. The problem for Iowa State was, and unfortunately, you know, Baylor barely got out of this with a win with James Akinjo and company. But, you know, Iowa State, you know, not from the unbeatens, likely because they shot one for 14 from three-point range. You can't do that against Baylor. You can't do that. I mean, and again, Baylor was, you know, in the lead. They were in control most of this game, but Iowa State was making plays throughout the throughout the game. I mean, there were some sick dunks, sick plays in this game. But Baylor's defense just thought another level. Baylor, unanimous number one right now. There is no, there is nobody else that has, you know, what Baylor has right now. Ohio State is wrapping up Nebraska right now, so they'll, they'll be, they'll be at least, you know, somewhere in the top 15 tomorrow, too. So, um, this week, you know, it looks like it's gonna be a, uh, it's going to be a weird week, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 
you know, all currently as scheduled have ranked matchups. Um, yeah, and Ohio State has just finished off Nebraska, so we can, you know, that that that's the final now. Um, you know, tomorrow some games have been rescheduled. I think Washington Arizona's new. That I don't think that was on there before, but you know, it's there now. Um, a big one on Monday. If if you want to watch, if you want to watch that, then you want to flip on over to Washington Arizona. But I mean, why would you want to flip over Washington? Come on, watching Washington basketball is bad. Um, but Zach Eddy, Javen Ivy, and this Purdue Boilermakers team, Matt Painter's Purdue Boilermakers team, you know, still number three in the country, you know, right now. Still a damn good team. Taking on Johnny Davis, Brad Davis, and the Wisconsin Badgers, who last time we talked about them, they got schooled by Ohio State. Um, so, I mean, that... That, that really has been something. Wisconsin's a really good team. We all know this. Purdue has been lights out this year. A Sands one game, you know, which they got stunned. I mean, but, you know, we're going to be a really intriguing one here. Um, Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Um, feast your eyes on those Baylor Bears and Oklahoma. Oklahoma. A really intriguing team. Also, Kentucky LSU again. LSU's gauntlet is continuing because Oscar Sheboy is waiting for the Tigers, and if he can get 28 rebounds again, I mean, I think a lot of people will be happy because I mean, dude has been balling out. This Kentucky team has been balling out lately. You know, again, they got a huge victory two weeks ago, or was it three weeks? I think it was about two or three weeks ago against North Carolina. They got a huge victory two or three weeks ago. Um, so this that that this early slate of games on Tuesday is gonna be real fun. Uh, of course, my long cords are playing on Tuesday as well. And then Kansas, Kansas has a big week. They're taking on Oklahoma State, Christian Braun and company. They're also taking on Texas Tech. And you know, we all know Texas Tech is not gonna be easy out. Uh, I believe I think Texas Tech was one of the teams that were on COVID pause, but I'm not I'm not entirely sure. And then there's also Tennessee LSU for, you know, the, the Tigers again. LSU already has to take on Kentucky, but they have to take on Tennessee as well. And this one's going to be really, really rough in my opinion. I think that when people when people like to complain about you know, college basketball being tough to watch, I think this is going to be one of those examples. I really think so. Um, LSU has had to be in comeback mode. I, I really thought you know. You know, I mean, they were down 18 to one at one point. I mean, again, they can't, they can't keep doing that. They can't against Auburn. They they can't keep, you know, coming back, you know, like that. Um, Tennessee's offense, you know, they lost. They didn't have two of their top three scores in an Alabama game. They should get those guys back. Um, and Tennessee, you know, their offense is, has been notoriously not great. I mean, did, I mean, again, did y'all see that game against Texas Tech? A few weeks ago, not, not a good offense. If you saw a game against Alabama, not that great of an offense. So both these teams are on something. They got to get something done um, this week. I don't know what the ACC is. I think it's just Duke right now. That only again, like I said last week, I think Duke is the only team right now that really has something. But keep your eyes on North Carolina, though. Keep your eyes on them. Um, although Houston has lost, you know. Their guys, they were able to scrape by Temple today. Um, UCF, UCF could be really intriguing. Memphis, you know, also try to get themselves back into shape because they got some huge victories over the week as well. So with the AAC, things are looking, they're looking a little bit more intriguing than they were about three or four weeks ago when I was bashing uh, Memphis, you know, real bad. Uh, and then you look at the rest of the slate again. You know Texas Tech, Iowa State. There's no reason to talk about Indiana. Indiana's not good. They just lost today. Indiana did. Um, San Francisco's Gonzaga could be intriguing. You know, um, San Francisco's only got what one or two losses. I think they only have one. So you know, that's going to be really intriguing if you want to watch something on Thursday. Uh, USC still undefeated right now. They haven't played. Colorado State's still undefeated. There's there's only three unbeaten's left. Um, Colorado State, USC, and Baylor. Um, I have not seen anything, any games from it, from either USC or Colorado State yet. I'll try and make those priority this week. 
Uh, and then, you know, Saturday, some games haven't been set yet because uh, they're still in you know, times to be determined because of the NFL and stuff like that and other sporting events around it. But, uh, you know, going to be a real intriguing week. A real intriguing week as usual for the Big 12. Again, you know, Texas Tech taking on Iowa State. Texas Tech then plays Kansas on Saturday. Iowa State plays Oklahoma. Oklahoma plays Baylor. And uh, uh, the Baylor Bears are playing TCU on Saturday as well. You know, it's, it's going to be a real fun weekend. It, it, you know, let's hope let's hope Michigan State doesn't beat up on Michigan too bad though. I mean, Michigan is god awful. I mean, like I said, UCF got a huge victory against Michigan earlier uh, this week too. I mean, my goodness, man. So. You know, this this week here is, is really intriguing. You know, we're about, what, halfway into the season now? Really getting into it, really biting our teeth into the conference play and stuff like that. We'll see what this week, you know, gives us. Again, COVID will probably mess things up. Again, games, I see games being rescheduled by the slightest second, honestly. You know, and... You know, it's it's going to be real fun to see how things go this week. Again, a lot of teams, you know, really trying to separate themselves from the pretenders, the contenders are trying to separate themselves from the pretenders, and the really good teams are starting to separate themselves, you know, in my opinion. You know, I mean, there's there's just been some damn good teams. I think the Big, the big 12, I mean, I, I said on Saturday you know, as I was watching Baylor, Iowa State, the Big 12 is going to be a bloodbath. I think it's going to be a bloodbath. Uh, uh, terrible terrible time for all and teams in this conference i mean it's gonna be rough every single week in the big 12 in my opinion because you know? uh, i mean there's just so many good teams i mean west virginia was down what three guys and they were still able to hang with texas we all know texas ain't got no offense you know uh, so you know I mean, it's just it's just gonna be real it's just gonna be a real fun week man for the Big 12 especially. Um, SEC's gotten, you know, a lot better. You know, Big East and, and the Big 10. I mean, they're, they're playing. They're playing at, at high levels too. A lot of these teams in these other conferences that aren't the Big 12 or the SEC, you know, are playing at a high level. You know, I mean, really, I mean, really, can you say from top to bottom Big 12 is the best conference? Top to bottom, I mean. If it weren't for Oklahoma State, you know, getting banned by the NCAA, uh, I certainly would say, can we put all 10 teams in the Big 10, in the Big 12, in the tournament, please? Uh, i definitely say that. I would definitely say that. But, alas, that's it for what I've got to say for this week. Um, next week, you know, is going to be a little bit, you know, more intriguing, you know, because I mean, we're working around the NFL playoffs and stuff like that, so... Um, and keep your eyes on the channel. It's going to be a real busy, you know, if, if next week holds serve, you know, and we see pretty much the same top 25, it's going to be a real fun week next, um, the week after this, um, you know, the week of January 10th through January 16th, that week is going to be real fun. I, I see a lot of fun matchups, you know, on our way, but this week, you know, doesn't have as much, you know, there's still some good ones, there's still some really good ones, but, you know, now that we know that some of these teams aren't really, you know, the teams that, you know, we thought they were, you know, like Tennessee, you know, I mean, there's just there's going to be some, it's just going to be something that, you know, it just is what it is. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to get on out of here, skedaddle, and get ready for this week. I wonder what the top 25 will look like this week as usual. Um, I assume it's not going to change much. You know, because, I mean, there's really just hasn't been a lot of upsets. There wasn't really any this week either. So, we'll see how everything goes. Take care, everybody. Good night, and I'll see you all tomorrow to, read, to talk about the NFL Week 17, because we got a lot to go over there. Good night, everybody.